breaking first at four, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says he's resigning after months of sexual harassment allegations. What's next for the Empire State? Plus a victory for President Biden's agenda as the Senate passes a major infrastructure bill. Good afternoon, Paula. Hey, Karen, you know, this is the time of year that's usually an exciting back to school prep time, but instead it's angst, anxiety and anger. Things are sure hot at board meetings around the nation, Andrew, and they're hot out here, too. <laughs> That's right. I see the bare arms. They're a good choice. Make sure you stay cool and comfortable. Temperatures now up to 90 degrees here in Motown, but Storm Tracker 4 is all clear. But what are our storm chances for tonight or tomorrow? That in your seven-day forecast, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News first at four starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, another day of scorching heat and humidity all across Metro Detroit. But there's also a chance of storms on the horizon. So let's get over to Andrew with the very latest on the forecast. Hey there, Karen. Good afternoon to you and good afternoon, everyone. Fortunately, there are no warnings, no watches as of yet, even for the heat, even though we're up to around 90 degrees and it feels even hotter. But still take care out there in the heat. You can see it's 90 degrees at City Airport, now over at Metro Airport, 89 in Gross Hill. A little bit cooler with temps in the upper 70s where it's a little bit cloudier up towards Sandusky. But take a look outside. That sun is just blazing with 90 over at the airport, but as Karen mentioned and Paula alluded to, it's the humidity and dew points. Dew points are in the upper 60s. You can really feel it in the atmosphere. It makes it feel like it's around 94. So keep kids and pets away from empty vehicles. Make sure you drink plenty of water, stay hydrated, cool and healthy if you're venturing outdoors. But on Storm Tracker 4, you notice it's all clear. But to our west, showers and storms. When do they arrive? What does it mean for tonight or tomorrow? That and your full seven day forecast in just moments. All right, thank you, Andrew. Now breaking. Andrew Cuomo stepping down as governor of New York. Cuomo resigned today after allegations of sexual harassment. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom with the latest. And Kim, the move comes after state lawmakers began preparing to impeach him. It did. Karen, good afternoon to you. New York's attorney general says Cuomo's resignation today closes a, quote, sad chapter for the state. In his address to reporters today, Cuomo apologized for his behavior and thanked the women who came forward, but insisted that he had not intended to harass any of his accusers. He claims he decided to resign in order to stop being a distraction. I would never want to be unhelpful in any way. And I think that given the circumstances, the best way I can help now is if I step aside and let government get back to governing. Allegations of sexual misconduct against Cuomo came to a head last week when the state's attorney general released its report. That investigation concluded he sexually harassed multiple women and fostered a toxic workplace where such behavior was tolerated. Cuomo denies all sexual misconduct claims against him. His lawyer criticized the AG's report, claiming it is not independent and is full of misinformation. From day one, this was about building a case against Governor Cuomo. The investigators, if you go through the report with a discerning eye and give it the scrutiny that it deserves, it failed to collect relevant evidence. New York is about to get its first woman governor, Lieutenant Governor uh, Kathy Hochul now becomes the state's 57th governor and the first woman to hold the post. The 62 year old will be sworn in as governor in 14 days once Cuomo's resignation goes into effect. Hochul has been a member of Cuomo's team since 2014, but has mostly worked quietly behind the scenes. She tweeted today she agrees with Cuomo's decision to step down and said she's ready to serve the people of New York. We'll have much more tonight when you join us on Local 4 News at 5. Until then, Karen, back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. The Senate passes a $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure package in a major victory for President Biden's agenda. Here are some of the key components of that package. The measure invests $110 billion in funding toward roads, bridges, and major projects, $65 billion to rebuild the electric grid, $55 billion for water infrastructure, $15 billion of which will be directed toward replacing lead pipes. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer spoke about the bill. Today, the Senate takes a decades overdue step to revitalize America's infrastructure and give our workers, our businesses, our economy the tools to succeed in the 21st century. 
So now the bill will now go to the House of Representatives, where Speaker Pelosi has said she won't allow a vote until a three and a half trillion dollar human infrastructure bill is also passed by the Senate. Five people have been arrested in connection to a shooting at a Detroit motel. This happened overnight at the Deluxe Inn Motel on Grand River near Seven Mile. Police say a woman called her two brothers over after getting into a fight with her boyfriend. They say the boyfriend shot the brothers when they arrived. Then one of the brothers, according to police, grabbed the gun and shot the boyfriend. Two suspects were arrested and are in the hospital in serious condition at this hour. Two other men and the woman were also arrested. A 27-year-old man is listed in critical. Now to the coronavirus. A group of independent advisors to the CDC will be meeting later this week to review data on COVID-19 boosters. As of right now, no vote is scheduled for Friday's meeting. The FDA would first have to make an amendment to the current emergency use authorizations or grant full approval of the vaccines before the panel can recommend additional shots. The panel had previously discussed boosters for immune compromised people during a meeting late last month where they urged federal regulators to move quickly on the issue. OK, speaking of vaccines, Greater Grace Temple hosted its 24th annual back to school festival, which featured COVID-19 vaccines and testing. This is the first year the church has included COVID vaccinations. Dozens of kids received school supplies for the upcoming school year. Families also enjoyed carnival games and rides. Organizers say that they want kids to be fully prepared for the school year. They're also encouraging schools to protect students from COVID-19. I think they have to do whatever they can to keep these kids safe. You know, to me, one death is too many. One kid losing their future with health challenges is too many. So I think I'm all for it. the boards that are saying they don't have to be masked. Well, it's inconvenient. Sometimes life is about inconvenience. Parents at the event said they feel kids should wear masks this upcoming school year. We're inching closer to the start of the school year, and the debate continues on whether masks will be required for in-person learning. Today, we reached out to several districts about their plans for the fall. The Detroit Public Schools Community District and Ann Arbor Schools are requiring masks, while Dearborn Schools and Undecided and Plymouth Canton Schools are recommending masks in Utica. However, masks are optional. Paula Tutman joins us live. And Paula, the mask issue has really become a hot topic among parents and students. Yeah, Karen, it, it really has. So we just kind of looked around and went to a place where a lot of people are doing some school shopping. And, you know, we found, we did find some excitement, but we also found a lot of angst, anxiety, and, and, and really uncertainty. And a lot of it is being fueled uh, by some of these board meetings. We just took a sample from across the nation of board meetings that happened last night. Take a listen to this. We must believe in the science that has proven that mask wearing reduces the spread of COVID, which will in turn keep our kids in school. Check on any school board meeting that happened last night, August 9th, 2021. We're not seeing um, the numbers rise where there's no mask mandate and we're seeing your numbers rise where there is a mask mandate. And it's like Groundhog's Day all over the nation. You guys have stripped my kid of a whole year of school already. The same conversations, a mix of angst, anger, this is how we see. misinformation. Did you know that the blue masks that you guys hang out or hand out to kids if they forget one have harmful toxins in them? Fear and emotion. And this is the mood three weeks from the start of most school years. Tim McAvoy is with the Utica Community Schools District, which has fended off a few angry public comment sections from its own meetings, including last night. Well, we recognize that there are emotional issues and that people are in different different spaces. But for us, it's, it's about moving forward. Thus far, this district of 26,000 students will be starting school with a mask option, though recommended. As parents and grandparents participate in that age old ritual of back to school shopping, for many there is a real excitement. So I can s see all my friends. That their children will experience in person learning, but also real fear and concern of the unknown this close to the start of the school year. Well, it's scary for the children because the children haven't gotten their vaccine yet, you know, and that means they might get sick. And children seem to generally take on the tone of their parents. They're excited to go back to school. They don't want to wear a mask, though. I don't like masks. You can't really believe in them. The kids that are not able to be vaccinated 
and not wearing masks, the likelihood of spreading it, especially with the Delta variant, is a lot higher. So that's, that's a, a huge concern for us. Well, you could still get sick from not having their mask on. And I do want to see other people's faces too, but still, the COVID is still a thing, so you need to have your mask on. The Utica School District continues to work with the Macomb County Health Department and with school beginning for this district, August 31st. What I would say to parents who are concerned is think about everything that we've been through since March of 2020 together. This is an incredibly resilient community. And like every school year, you know, back to school is such a tradition and what it represents. It represents a new beginning and there's so much to be excited about for the start of our school year. Yeah, you know what? School districts are really trying to get this figured out. And Karen, this is going to sound a lot like Groundhog's Day as well, where it just kind of repeats itself and repeats itself. And that is whatever your school district tells you today, it could very well change in the next two, three, four weeks, depending on this variant and whether or not they're listening to their uh, their county health departments or CDC recommendations. A lot of it depends on the spread of the Delta variant. All right, we appreciate that report. Thank you, Paula. Still to come here first at four, film and TV star comes forward about a secret health battle she's facing. Plus a look at stories making headlines across America, including a tornado touching down in Illinois. But first, another Twitter suspension for Georgia Republican Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. What she tweeted that landed her one step closer to being banned.